today we're making a new style of vintage paper and it comes with a warning which is it's unbelievably addictive and it's so much fun. I've made quite a few pages and they look like this. So they're DIY vintage papers and they're made with wax. So I made this one with a blue border and you can see the opacity that the wax gives, a beautiful old effect. I've added some paint in a stamp and I've added some splatters and I'll show you exactly how to do this today. I did the same thing with a botanical sheet. I really like the effect it gives here and I can see the gold paint. I've got black and brown splatters of paint on here. I did it with a plain piece of paper, so one without much colour and it just feels absolutely fantastic when you touch it. So get out your papers today and have a play. You can play with scrapbook style papers as well if you want to. I had a go with music paper and it works really well with that. And I also had a play with some Amazon packaging paper and this works beautifully too. So what's so amazing about this effect is this partially see-through result that you get. And I thought that would work incredibly well on the cover of a journal. So how beautiful is this? It's a cover that I've made by waxing it and splatting it. And there's a particular process I'll share today. I've lined the inside with some Shakespeare plays and a bit more of that, I use the packaging paper. So I'll show you exactly how to do this today so you can do it too. You could also add the pieces to your ephemera. You could put it on pockets and belly bands and tags. I included a couple of elements on the front of some asymmetric envelopes that are recently made. I added some extra pieces on top. I even stamped, painted and added washi. I have the process steps as usual to make life easy today. So gather your supplies, let's get ready, let's make some vintage paper. So the first thing we need to do to make these beautiful vintage papers is gather our supplies and set up our desk. And compared with many projects, this really is one where we need to be just a little bit more organised and have things ready, partly because as the wax melts that we're going to melt onto the paper, we just need to act relatively quickly as part of the process that I'll show you today. So I thought the easiest way to do that would be to show you what's on my desk and talk you through the elements. And what's probably most important to show you to begin with is the protection to your desk. So if I just pan out here, you can see I've got a rather large piece of it's cardboard, quite thick cardboard, and that's protecting my desk space because I'm going to do a bit of ironing. I would suggest one that's way bigger than the pieces of paper that you're going to use, and I'll talk you through the papers as well. You don't have to use digitals, I want to say that up front. So to the right of me here, I've got that journal that I'm going to show you how to make. I've got a couple of things to make scratchy, on the paper. So I tried it with a nail file, it actually wasn't rough enough. So I've been using a different nail file, something that's really quite coarse. It doesn't have to be big, we're not covering a lot of expanse, but something maybe some sort of sandpaper would work really well too. I've got some bits of colour here. So I've got my water brush pens, I've got some ink. I want to show you a couple of things that didn't work talk you through that as I create these vintage papers. So I've got my gold paint, my Kuretake paint from Stationery Pal. I've got my watercolours, I've got some other pa paints on the table just to the left of me. I will also have some discount codes so you can find those in the description box below. I hope that helps. I've got a tub of wax, you don't need anywhere near this amount. You need a smallish amount and I could use maybe something like that to do several pages. I'll tell you how I collect this wax. I haven't gone out and bought it. I like to upcycle. Just panning around, I've got some of the packaging paper that I've done the waxing on and I'm going to use that in the journal itself. 
that's my collage paper tub. You can see a few other items here that are mentioned, so covers the front collaged on my asymmetric envelopes, but of course think about how you could use it to rip up and put into a junk journal, on your pockets, on your pages as background, on your tags. I've got a little iron and I'm going to be using this today. So this is a, it's actually a travel iron. I've had it a while, so it's, it's quite diddy for use on a desk, but a larger iron would be absolutely fine too. Here's the other paints I mentioned. So I'm going to use some metallic paints today that really creates a beautiful effect. I've got some grease proof paper and I'll talk you through why I had a go at using that. You may want to use some, but you don't have to. I've got some papers in there that I've been grabbing from a box and I have had to go with all sorts of papers. So feel free to play using different sorts of papers, not just digitals. I've got a book here that I'm going to steal some pages from to line my journal cover. And these are some of the things that I'll be using, or most of the things, to make these vintage papers. So pick the papers that you want to play with. Today I've chosen a digital from Antonio Makes. And I just think this one is absolutely beautiful because it does have that vintage style script, very bold. It's got some numbers on, it's got some stamps. And I've also found one of his with some blue around it. But as I say, feel free to use scrapbook paper, even that Amazon packaging paper, because I think it works really well too. What we want to do is bear in mind if you want to make a journal, maybe think about the size of the piece of paper that you're going to use and begin by screwing it up. And screw it up quite well. So quite, this is quite tough paper. I use 90 GSM paper, so not the cheapest. And in fact, that helps me get a sharper image. So screw it up. And if you think you can see areas that are not so screwed up, go in and have another go like that. And one tip that I have for this process is to do two at a time. So let's have a go with this one too. Screw that up and then open it out. Yeah. And it goes a bit softer as we screw it up as well, which I think helps with this as well. It makes it a little bit bendy and more tactile and feel distressed and aged. So we'll open that up as well. And what we're going to do is take each of these sheets. I'll just work with one. Open it up, flatten it down. It doesn't even matter if you've got tiny little tears like that. I think that just adds to it. It's lovely, isn't it? We're going to take our sanding equipment. So I'll use my, it's actually quite a well-worn nail file. And I'm going to just put my hand down flat to hold it and press and push out. And I just get an element of the surface taken off. And that's going to give us a slightly different effect when we wax it and add those other elements. So it doesn't take very long. I can see see a change in the surface it becomes a little bit more dull. It also irons out a few of those creases so you can't really overdo the, the crease making to begin with. I won't do the second sheet for speed but if you want to do two at a time I'll show you why and so at this point also put your sander on the second piece of paper. Lovely. So now we have a creased and sanded piece of paper, or indeed two. What we want to do is add a layer of wax. I'll tell you a little bit about the wax that I use. So I do like upcycling and recycling. What I've been doing is taking my wax melts and when the wax is melted in the wax melt burner, I put the item in the freezer, give it a day or so to freeze, take that out and you'll find it easy to, to just knock these out of your wax melt burner and these are perfect for just carving up and using on your piece of paper and if you're really smart and if you want to this is a little one I've got left you can choose what sort of scent to use so some of these smell 
absolutely amazing. The easiest way that I've found to do this is just with a pair of scissors. So I had to go with a, a knife and I just found this the easiest way to get small amounts off. When I did it with a knife, I got rather large pieces coming off. And one of the tips I have today is just get small amounts and spread it over the page. And what that does is it makes it faster to melt because you're working with small shavings, small pieces. And another consideration at this point is to think about whether you actually want the whole page to be covered in wax or not. So if you're going to make a junk journal or a journal cover, I should say, you may want to sew around it at the end just to bring it all together, particularly if you're going to add another layer of maybe collage or book page to line the inside. And that will mean if you're going to sew, sewing around the edge. And if you want to avoid having any wax at all when you're sewing, it is doable with wax and I've done it, then just think about where you position the wax shavings as you distribute them over the page. So having had a go at doing a few of these, these are the things that I've been learning and I hope that they help you maybe make the absolute best of your time at your craft desk. Sometimes it's fun to play an experiment as well, and I always encourage that. So it looks like we've got quite a few shavings over here. This is a very quick process, but I have to say, just sitting and cutting wax, when did you last do that? And how satisfying. So I've got some on here. I'm going to take my second piece of paper, which I would have sanded, turn it face to face, so we've got both of the decorative sides talking to each other. And then remember I've got both of these pieces of paper on something to protect my desk. Take my iron, which has been heating up, and this is where we dive in and have a go at melting it. And you can see straight away that the wax is melting and it's coming through the paper. Let's see if I can do it that way, get the wire out of the way. And it starts to have that see-through effect. So the other thing that I would suggest as well, particularly if you're heavy handed with the wax, is to put another piece of paper behind the one that you're trying to actually decorate. And that can gather and collect some of the wax because it will seep through the paper. If you don't want to waste anything, you could maybe put some Amazon packaging paper behind while you're doing a bit of ironing. This little diddy iron, is a travel iron and I hadn't used it for some time but I just thought couldn't we do something fun with it and this process came to mind particularly as you've seen my tub of wax so I'm going all over I think I had quite a small amount of wax on but that's okay because we can always add more I just want to have one layer of wax on these pieces you'll find that at some point it suddenly becomes very liquid. So even if you think you haven't got a lot on, it will suddenly become liquid and spread out. Take your time, keep the iron moving over it. Obviously mind your fingers. We'll see what we've got. I might add a little bit more before I add the distress effects, which I think are really fun too. Let's just see how we're doing. So I've got some on here. This one seems to have been greedy and absorbed most of it. So I'm going to go in with another layer before we add any of the paint. Look, this hasn't got enough for me yet, so let's, let's do it. Let's just carve it up. It's not too tough. Just add a bit more. I guess the paper will vary in the extent to which it absorbs the wax, depending on what you're using. And I would suggest that if you're going to have a go at this, you have several pieces of paper ready all at one time, because it might be easier to do a batch in a go. And I certainly found that. And then just lay them out somewhere. There we go. So let's have another go at getting a bit more just seeping into this so that we get that stunning effect. This reminds me of, what's the brand? Is it Barber? 
Barber Coats. Gorgeous, that sort of waxed fabric. It feels a bit like that. Love it. So I'll go on round two. I think it should be enough for us to add our paint effects. I think what's happening with this example is I've got two greedy pieces of paper which are both relatively high quality and they're sucking in the wax. I did try, I was going to explain the greaseproof paper, I did try using greaseproof paper over the top of a piece of paper to melt it and it did work but I have to say at some point because I don't mind what happens to this particular iron, I don't mind actually just going in and going over the wax. So if you're okay with using your iron in this way, what you can do is this. Open up, I've actually got some of the wax sitting on there. You can go in and go straight to the piece of paper and the wax. And actually, your iron doesn't get that clagged up. It's obviously a much quicker way of melting it. Can you see what's happening? Just a gorgeous effect as it melts through. It will just take a little bit longer if you've got two pieces of paper back to back, but it's an easier way of protecting your iron. And even if you use greaseproof paper, it will seep through a bit. So just a warning about the iron that you use, maybe just be aware that there might be a little bit left on it, but it doesn't, see it hasn't completely ruined it. I've got a little bit of ink on there, I think. So just going over it, and at this point I can smell beautiful vanilla smells. I wish you could reach through the screen and just smell what I can smell. So I think I'm okay with that so far. It isn't necessarily over all of the sides, which from lessons, I think that's a tiny bit better for when I'm coming to do the sewing, if you want to do the sewing and make a journal cover from it. So we've got to that stage. What I'm going to do is add some of those distress techniques. At this point I'm going to add a couple of distress effects and I'm going to add some gold and I'm going to use a stamp to do that with and I'm also going to add some splats of paint. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing today but I just thought to give you some suggestions. You can probably see the crosshatch effect in gold on this one that's a bit more clear and you can see the opacity here. It's just beautiful in contrast with the green. This is one of my favourite digitals. This is from Louise Heinzel and I will try to leave links in the description box down below. I've also splattered this and I did an awful lot of, let's say, a lot more splattering and playing with some of the other pieces of paper. So I've got some with red here, which I think worked. This is a gorgeous one from Tracy Fox's Compendium collection. Here it's picked up the gold and some green. So I'll show you the process and I'll also explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. And because I've been talking, what I need to do is just get that ink, that ink, the wax to be just a little bit more melted. And that's why I was going to suggest, or I did suggest that the supplies that you're going to use are laid out around you because you want to work while the wax is melted because it integrates into each other and it helps hold it in. So that's nice and liquid. I'm going to start with, I've got an acrylic stamp. I've got my gold Curitaki paints. Bring them on. It's warm. And I'm going to dab just onto my stamp here. I'll just do it by hand so this isn't going to be attached to an acrylic block and you'll see why. Just dab some paint on. It doesn't need to be gold, you could use colours. We'll have a go with some others in a second. And I like to just look for some of the spaces in the pattern and add. And that's come out as a blob. Let's see what we're doing. I think can I get any of this to come out? I think it's because I've put a very thick layer of wax on. Let's go. That's got a bit there. I need to go a bit thicker, less water, so that the paint is allowed to show the squares. It doesn't matter, does it? That's a bit better, it's showing now. So I had the paint too watery before. Let's 
good to show you what doesn't work as well as what does. A bit there. Yeah, it's starting to work. As it's a little bit thicker, it's working. So I've got some gold on there. I'm going to be a bit greedy and maybe have a go with some green. I would like green. Let's see if this can Maybe a bit of brown. This wasn't in the plan, but I think I want to have a go. Like that. Get some daubs and some dabs down. I'm seeing a little bit of the square coming through. It worked on these, perhaps at the places where I didn't have as much wax on the paper. Yeah, it's good. I've got a bit of it. Yes, I can see it here on the right. So I've got some distress effects there. I'm going to go in with one of my favourite toys. And these are metallic paints from Arteza. I'm just going to add a little bit extra. I don't know why, but I thought I'd have something pink on there too. Let's just live in the moment and do what we want. And I'll take the other piece of paper, which I've still got some unmelted wax on, but just to show you what I would do, take that piece of paper, put it on top, take my iron and go for the second ironing. But what's going to happen is obviously both of the faces of the paper will pick up the stamp and the paint blobs, but you'll also find that the paint and the wax start to blend together a little bit and I think that just helps preserve it rather than it sitting on the top of your design. Obviously each of these is going to be different and that's part of the fun and you can experiment with your different papers and see what effects you like. There's no limit to what you can add as those distress effects. You don't need one of those acrylic stamps. Use what you have, have a daub and a splat and see what you come up with. So how to use these beautiful pieces of vintage paper now that you've made a few. And there really is no limit to what you can do with them. You could cut out these images, you could rip them up. On this one I did add little splats of red and I said I'd have just let you know what I did with those inks. So I thought I would just experiment with some ink splats. It was quite hard to get the ink to splat on it, to actually drop from the brush. And I don't know that it added a lot. I, I like the red, but it was quite hard work to make it happen. So I, know, I don't know that I'd bother with the ink. I think the paint in its entirety is, is all we need. But I want to take one of these sheets and turn it into something really beautiful. You could cut it up and add it to the front of any envelopes. It would look great on a tag. I even experimented and added a stamp and I painted on the stamp so miraculously it even gripped to the wax to do that and the, the washi tape is gripping to it as well which I was quite surprised about. So experiment and play and see what you want to do. I thought I would show you today just very quickly how I create this. So it works really well as a junk journal cover because you get to see all of the beautiful decoration. It's just stunning and to do that the first thing I need to do is line one of these. So I'll pick is that the one we just made? Let's find the one we just made. I think it's this one. I'll take this and I'm going to line the back of it. So just like this. So I thought I'd choose a couple of pages from a book about Shakespeare. And they're not going to be the right size, but we'll cope with that as well. So here we go. A couple of pages, Will. And I like this because it's got the old style text and it just kind of goes with the vibe of something very vintage. So I need some of those and as I say I know it's not going to be big enough so when I put them on I've got gaps but I'll start by just getting them down. I probably need quite a bit of glue on the back of the Taming of the Shrew. Oh I'm rhyming like Shakespeare himself. So I'll take that all the way to the edge, try and get it to be quite neat. Just 
press that down. Isn't that pretty? I did have a think about whether I wanted to round the corners and if you watch my videos you'll know that I do a lot of corner rounding. But on this particular design I thought the square corners worked really well. So we've got one down, I'll just do the other. I quite like the tappy edge. So I'm going to glue it so that that is on the edge. So make your own choices about your design preferences. Get glue all over it, I think we do need that. And you can see what we've got because the pages are not the perfect size is a gap here and a bit of a gap at the bottom. And I didn't want to tear down or cut down and lose any of this. So I thought what I'd do is go into the piece of packaging paper that I've also had a play at doing and literally just use some of that. Now the wax makes this tougher, which is also good. On this particular one, I've added the wax, I sprayed with mica, you get some interesting effects and you can see the gold coming through really well on that crosshatch effect. I think I had to go with green ink on this as well, not a huge success. So I think I'll have that down the middle, we'll just glue that on. Again, plenty of glue just to make sure it attaches to that wax. I'm going to point out the top, but that's okay. I can just trim it off. Go down to there. Just get a pair of scissors and trim that. I'm not going to fold it over, literally a bit of a trim. And down here, just rip that there. And then I'm just going to take a piece and put it across the bottom. So, I'm quite generous with my tearing there. I'll just get that oops, down at the bottom. So that just goes down there. I'll show you the, I think as a, as a finished effect, I think it works quite well. So it marries up the wax with that feeling of wax on the outside cover. Press that down and again I'll just go round and trim off the excess. Now if you don't want to sew around it, do make sure that you put glue all the way to the edge when you're gluing down your interior here. What I am going to do is just run a stitch around this, fold it in half and turn it into a journal. So here is one with the stitching done, it's just a small running stitch all the way round. I made a right angle at the corner and my tip when you're sewing is to just hold this and help the cover move through under the needle because there will be a little bit of resistance, perhaps a bit of stickiness from the wax. It didn't cover my needle and it didn't cause any damage but just use your hands to move the paper through just to keep it moving. And when that's been sewn, all we need to do is just give it a bit of a fold and then fill it with beautiful papers. And to fold it, I would take it over and just give it just a gentle press down, not a very, very strong crease. We haven't put a very thick layer of wax on, so it shouldn't crack too much and a little bit of cracking is fine. And that gives you a cover that'll have sewing round here, ready to fill with beautiful papers and look like this. And I just used a very simple figure of eight method with string on the outside, which I think adds something. And you end up with a beautiful vintage junk journal. If you'd like to make a junk journal with your vintage papers, then check out my video where I show you exactly how, including all the folding to make a beautiful signature inside. I hope to see you soon.